The Fence Community Dogs program was established to help veterans who are suffering with PTSD. We found that a really good way of training the dogs for this is using prisoners because there's a consistency in training. They can train the dogs 24 hours a day. This is about replicating what a veteran is going to need. The dogs are going to have to look after their veterans 24-7. There couldn't be a more ideal setup than having a person who is dedicated to that dog 24-7. We were fortunate enough to be selected by the Commissioner to introduce the program into uh, Queensland Corrective Services. It's already a really successful program in New South Wales at Bathurst Correctional Centre. So yes, yeah, so we were really thrilled and very honoured to be uh, the first Queensland Centre to be taking the Defence Community Dogs program on. Having a partnership with Numbamba is an amazing opportunity for us to expand the program but also to have a really strong presence in Queensland. There is a large concentration of veterans who are based in Queensland so having access to a ready trained assistance dog is going to be an enormous benefit for the local people in Queensland. Arch, I call him my Archangel, he's um, yeah, it's a life saver and a life changer. Being a single veteran I would sort of spiral in my thoughts. Uh, he, and it's, it's hard to ground yourself, so having a uh, companion or Archie, if you do zone out, if you do get stressed, he can ground you and, you know, so it, it works wonderfully well. And that's one of his major contributions to changing my life. I was definitely shutting myself away from life and the world, so now with him I do have the confidence to go out and about and all that stuff, so yes, that's a big difference. And just recently, Arch and I went to the state of origin that's something I would, probably could not have done before. So like, yeah, life has definitely improved uh, for, for me and for him, I think, as well, being a rescue dog. Our job um, as Defence Community Dogs is to assess the dogs coming into the program. The dogs are rescue dogs. From there, after assessing the dogs, they come into um, the jails. The two jails are Nullumbar and Bathurst Correctional Centre. During their training, the inmates are obviously trained up for um, intense assistance dog work. They learn everything from body language through to really advanced training techniques. The period of training and intense training goes for about six to ten months. Prisoner selection um, to be involved in the program is really important. Um, and there needs to be a, a real genuine commitment from, from the women to be involved and, and we certainly have found that. Um, the, the women are really invested. Um, they're excited to be working with the, with the dogs and they're really focused on the outcomes for the veterans at the end of the program. At the start they initially do roughly five to seven weeks of theory, so a lot of it is um, obviously about handling the dog, about the different um, theories that go behind how to handle the dogs that they'll be getting. Leading up to that they then learn a lot of the basic commands, so the hand signals. Um, they also learn, I guess, general obedience and how to look after the hygiene side with the dog. Since we've completed most of the basic obedience, we've moved on to a lot of veteran specific commands. A lot of them are um, buffers that allow the veteran to have some space, um, providing personal space. So we had the front block, um, that one's really useful in a kind of very crowded situation, just providing um, a buffer from um, people oncoming essentially. Um, we also have a back block position. The back block um, is there to um, be support for the veteran if they are facing, say, for instance, an ATM or um, somewhere where they might feel their backs exposed and the dog's just there and a bit of comfort. So often the dogs will apply a bit of pressure there and just a shift of weight and things like that's just quite a comfort for the dog. The dogs also perform the rest command um, and so that command is where the dog's head is placed on the handler's lap and provide a bit of support and focus if they're, if they're starting to feel themselves become anxious and just need that grounding as such. Um, another behaviour they perform is a stress interrupter behaviour. When you're performing a behaviour you're not aware of necessarily, so it might be leg tapping or starting to wring your hand, the dogs will come and interrupt those behaviours. We do encourage the dogs um, as more of a complex skill in the house to collect items for the handler um, and bring them to them on cue as well as place items in general locations so in the rubbish bin or in the washing machine. Some veterans might experience um, nightmares and night terrors um, and often we find that there might be a bit of tossing and turning in the bed, kicking of feet, 
um, any vocalisations and the dogs are trained to respond to those. So whether or not it's putting pressure on the veteran's legs or coming up and actually physically waking them up with attention to their face and hands and things like that. The program's teaching the prisoners to have a lot more responsibility now that they have a dog that they have to care for 24-7. So they have to look after, they need to feed the dog, they need to groom it, they have to ensure that it's in its best health so they have to do daily checks of the dog to make sure they don't have any ticks or fleas or any injuries or anything like that. Some of the women haven't had jobs before so they're not used to structured days as such in the outside world. So um, the program is giving them a lot more experience to get used to having structure within their day and having goals that they have to have to set and they have to meet those goals as well. So it, it gives them a bit more determination as well. They, they take a lot of pride in the achievements that they make with the dogs, like every kind of milestone. It's really important for them and the progression of the dog is also really important. There's a lot of value in the women being involved in this program and probably just the women here in general to see um, what's being done and what can be done um, when people you know, dedicate themselves to something. Knowing what they're doing, like giving back to the veterans, like they're, they're working towards a greater cause. So all the work that they're putting in, um, I think they feel privileged that they're going to be able to hand the dog over at the end and all the hard work and training that has gone into the dogs is going to reflect um, on the dog's behaviour and to be able to assist a veteran um, that does have PTSD to, to, to live a better life.